Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, aka the guy whose accent is worse than both Billy and Lenny's in this episode. In this video, we're breaking down The Boys Season 3, Episode 7. The entry is filled with easter eggs, a big backstory segment for Billy Butcher, and a lot of things just like that which pull from the comics. So sit back, shut up, and get ready for a Vault News Network special report where we go through it all. Now after last week's live stream exposing Vought, Homelander, and Soldier Boy, we pick up with a news report by VNN. This comes across like a propaganda edit from the start, and it has the stars and stripes burning, suggesting that Starlight wants to destroy America. However, this also has its own symbolism, as Homelander's cape is of course based on the famous flag. Ashley denies the claims that Maeve is missing, and this episode actually clears up that she's in a secure cell, located at an undisclosed location owned by Vought. We can confirm this due to the SWAT team members who wear Vought's logo on their shoulder pads. Due to what Homelander says about getting used to it, this is likely where he was raised, and the white cell looks very similar to the videos that we've seen of him as a kid. Now these cells were built to be super resistant, and in the comics we discover that there was actually a nuke pointed at the entire facility, on the off chance that one of them wouldn't play ball, and they had to destroy the entire thing. Homelander was raised here without a mother or father, and this explained a lot of his psychological issues. In the comics we discover that he was cloned from Stormfront, but I had a feeling that they might have changed it up, with a pair getting it on in Season 2. We discussed how Homelander could have been cloned from Soldier Boy, but in this episode, we learn that he's actually his biological son. The series has been heavily laced with the idea of fatherly relationships, and this has been a motif for characters like Huey and his dad, Mother's Milk and Janine, Stan Edgar and Victoria, Billy and his father, and so on and so forth. In episode 6, Soldier Boy even talked about how he'd wanted to have kids with Crimson Countess. You know, a couple of little boys, raise them up to be men. Now... Now I got nothing. This line almost gets played beat for beat in this episode when Homelander is talking to Maeve. Lots of similarities going on here as they both want kids, but there's a really f***ed up side to it too. Soldier Boy didn't really consent to having a son, and Homelander also tells Maeve that her eggs will be harvested so that she won't have a choice either. He says one of the coldest lines in the season, in I'm not letting you live, I'm keeping you alive. Really messed up, and I kinda hope that she actually gets a happy ending. In the comics, she was killed in Vought Tower during a fight with Homelander, but they do tease here something else that could happen. Maeve wants nothing more than to be normal, and with Soldier Boy stripping someone of their powers, there could be a way for her to lose them and get somewhat of a regular life. She's maved up, like made up, eh? That Homelander is wearing concealment due to him having a bruise, and as Vanko said, If you can make God bleed, then people will cease to believe in him. Now as I mentioned, Ashley says Maeve is in rehab, further carrying on this lie, and she also states that Soldier Boy died in 84, again sticking to the official story. Ashley is now the CEO, and she'd likely have access to all the info, including the stuff about Soldier Boy. She also brings up Starlight's connection to Kimiko, and states that she's a member of the Shining Light Liberation Army. This was the terrorist organisation that kidnapped Kimiko and her brother so that they could be turned into soups to fight for their army. Ashley says connect the dots, and Shining Light is of course similar to Starlight, so as I've been saying, Mysterio was right. Stop. Mysterio we don't, that's all. Right. No, it's all, it's all connected. D don't interrupt again. Now, I think this very much shows that Homelander's plan of destroying the world is all talk, and that he needs to be loved to the point that he'd never actually carry it out. The boys comic series was always pushed as the superpowered people's biggest weaknesses being their own egos, which he's definitely a victim of. He gets exposed again by Starlight in a moment that made me literally punch the air, I got you, you son of a bitch, but he immediately transforms to try and save face. Homelander destroying the world is all talk, and therefore he runs spin on Starlight instead of immediately killing her, because he knows what the public backlash would be like. You damn chump. See ya chump. We then cut to Soldier Boy singing the song, If You Wanna Be Happy by Jimmy Soul. He of course appeared on Solid Gold the other week, and the guy had a lot of music success. The song If You Wanna Be Happy is basically about how you're better off marrying an ugly woman like Ryan Eri's dad as no one will want her, and yeah, I don't know if that kind of stuff would fly today. Especially cause you, you get offended by everything don't you, but I still love you. You're my boy Blue! A huge shout out to Gero Ramos for pointing out that this music video is parodying the Robert Mitchin album on screen right now. Cheers you chump. Now it turns out the legend produced it, and above his fireplace we can see the payback movie poster that was used in the promo material for the show. Huey is wearing a Doobie Brothers t-shirt, and we also learn about Soldier Boy's time in the war. Much like Captain America, he was used purely for propaganda, and the character was only created to sell war bonds for the US. Cap of course ended up actually getting involved in the fighting, whereas Soldier Boy was just a PR stunt. 
With him being an actor, this could also be riffing on John Wayne, who made numerous World War II movies, but he's gone down in history as being a draft dodger. However, though this is reported quite a lot as being the truth, Wayne actually did try to register, but he was rejected because he had a wife and four children. Soldier Boy still doesn't mind getting on with women his age though, and he can't fight the feeling anymore to get in deep as we hear REO Speedwagon's classic in the background. Legend also references some of the old stars that he's had, which includes Jacqueline Smith and Jacqueline Bissett. Huey again has no idea who they are, but they start in Charlie's Angels and Bullet respectfully. Now this episode they're after Mindstorm, a character that's a new creation for the show. He's basically a psychic based on the likes of Professor X and Jason Stryker. Due to the character design, I'm leaning more towards the latter, and like Stryker, Mindstorm can infect someone with powerful visions that they end up getting lost in. He's living out in the wilderness and is referred to as Howard Hughes, a major business magnate, aviator, philanthropist and film director who's regarded as being one of the most accomplished people of all time. However, as the years went on, his mental health started to decline and his OCD went to extreme levels. Hughes once sat in a darkened room just screening movies non-stop for four months and he urinated in bottles, crapped in mason jars and wore Kleenex boxes for shoes. Basically lived the life of a movie YouTuber and his personal hygiene slipped massively, resulting in him growing long hair and fingernails. He was heavily medicated and using Mindstorm's prescriptions they managed to track him down. Soldier Boy also brings up that he needs more weed, which Butcher uses to stop his PTSD from triggering. However, he gets one of the common side effects of this, which is paranoia, which I wouldn't actually know about in case my mother's watching. Now he ends up second guessing Huey and Butcher, which does have some foundations, as we of course know he was betrayed by his team in Nicar Nicaragua. Still got it. What an idiot! Now jump to Frenchie and Chemico going to Mother's Milk, and he once more wears a DMX t-shirt. On top of the Black Panther poster from last week, there's also one for Huey Newton and a picture of Barack Obama. Also, interesting coincidence here, MM lives in apartment 42, which is the same number that Jackie Robinson had. A number of 42s popped up in Into the Spider-Verse as references to him, and since then, I've just thought of that whenever I see them in a show. 42 is also the meaning of life, oh, I'm moving on. Now we cut to Butcher and Co out in the woods and they open up the trunk. This is a similar shot to earlier in the season in which they were with Mother's Milk. He's gone now though and the group are very much enabling each other. Butcher has been criticised for turning Kimiko into a weapon and he's very much just using Soldier Boy for the same thing. They also discuss Soldier Boy's drug use and they're also clearly hooked on Compound B even though we discover it's very much killing them. It's of course injected much like heroin and it gives someone a high for 24 hours making it have very addictive qualities. From here we jump to Black Noir, who's hiding out at a rundown Buster Beavers, which is what I used to do when I was 20, eh Buster Beaver? Now this Chuck E. Cheese parody was actually advertised on the social media accounts for the show all the way back in February, so we had some inkling that this might be a location that showed up. Buster Beavers stutters like Papa Porky Pig, and he brings up the Black Noir massacre on Lagos, which has already been touched upon in the season. This was a play on Wonder at the start of Civil War who killed several Wakandans out in Lagos. Really it was Homelander who got him through it, but he thinks it was these cartoon characters. Noir imagines the animals coming back to life and as we discovered in episode 3, he had brain damage after the attack in Nicaragua. This has taken him back to having an almost childlike mind state and him retreating to this shows how he very much finds comfort in his childhood memories. He also drew one of the characters earlier in the season and through them we learn what really happened in Nic when Soldier Boy was taken away. Now, Soldier Boy is played by the eagle character, which of course represents America's mascot, whereas Noir is a timid sheep. We also discover his name is Irving, and I'm kind of sticking with the theory that he could be a relative of Stan Edgar. After Soldier Boy sets off a tripwire, Butcher is transported back into his worst nightmare by Mindstorm. Now this pulls several elements from Butcher's origin story in the comics. Beginning in Omnibus 5, we see his childhood in the arc titled Bomb Alley. This entire arc runs for six issues and it's centred around Billy going to his father's open casket after the Undertaker has done him up for his funeral. We learn that he was a baker, which Butcher found hilarious due to their surname. However, their dad would kick the crap out of anyone who made fun of it and Billy used to spend his nights listening to his dad beating up his mother. He would go to sleep promising to kill him one day and this anger inside spilled over into the classroom. He punched a teacher while fighting another kid whereas in the show he attacks one after he says he doesn't want him to turn out like his dad. Now on top of this, they also have the scene where his dad gives him a beer. In the show, it's during a visit to the pub, whereas in the comics, he cracks open a can for him in the basement of the bakery. 
It's during this conversation that he says his brother is like his mother, whereas Billy is just like him. These words stuck with him for the rest of his life, and Billy turning into his dad has also been touched upon by Grace Mallory. Shortly after this, his father had a stroke, and one night his mother tried to cut up his steak for him so he could eat it easier. He ended up breaking her eye socket, and for the rest of the story, she has a glass eye. Billy said he was going to kill him, but Lenny ended up talking him down. He said that it would break his mother's heart, and that if his dad died, he'd go to jail, and they'd have nowhere to live, and also no money. This line about breaking hearts is brought up in the episode, and Billy's grandfather also says it to him when he toys with joining the army. Realising that he couldn't work with his dad because he'd end up killing him, Butcher then joined the Royal Marines and he fought in the Falklands War. Now, I want to do a big breakdown on his backstory in another video, but that's pretty much how it plays out in the comics in terms of what we also get in the episode. We learn that he's going to be stuck in this until he starves to death, unless Mindstorm decides to free him. The soldier boy says Huey better get that idea out of his head, otherwise he'll slap him like he's Connery. Sean Connery had an interview with Barbara Walters where she'd asked him if he stood by his statement on slapping women from a couple of years prior. He doubled down on this and said he stood by it, and that it was fine if the circumstances called for it. Now this idea of abuse of course carries over to the flashbacks, and we see how Billy hit his brother and took the beatings for him. Lenny is someone who has weighed over Billy massively, and he's appeared in hallucinations throughout this season. At one point he appeared on the TV for a split second, and he also flashed in place of Huey after they set Soldier Boy free. Billy's room is full of football memorabilia, including flags of both West Ham and Charlton Athletic. At one point in the episode, we can see a calendar that says 1989. Charlton actually shared Upton Park with West Ham for a season and a half, explaining why he supports the two teams. Billy's father's beating of course mirrors his anger, and as they've discussed throughout the season, V only brings out what's inside of someone already. This is Merritt and Kimiko, who too wishes to be injected with it once more. At Mother's Milk, we see Frenchie saying it's the greatest sorrow of his life that he missed Herogasm, and he's constantly bigged it up throughout the entire series. They're trying to find a way to take out Soldier Boy, and I think for the finale, that he'll end up teaming up with Homelander. Can see the pair just going wild, and this will make the boys rejoin forces in order to stop them both. Who knows, they might even end up getting someone like Black Noir on their side, and he could lead them to Maeve, who will join the fight, so you kind of have mixes of the Seven, the Boys, and also Payback. This would mirror Noir and Homelander's rivalry in the comics, and I think it would be such a cool way to take the show in the future. Kimiko then sits with Annie, watching Michael Sembello's Maniac from the movie Flashdance. This is later given a second reference when we find out that Soldier Boy slagged off Black Noir to its producer Don Simpson. Now Kimiko focuses on the video for a bit, but rather than slipping off into a fantasy, she stays with Starlight and concentrates on the important things. I think this is truly symbolic of how she's now accepted that she'll never have the happy life she's fantasized about, and sadly, she is the killer she didn't want to be. She needs to be strong to protect Frenchie, and this puts Starlight in the position where she has to return to Vought Tower. Back with Huey and Soldier Boy, the latter says that Butcher must suck like a Hoover Deluxe for him to constantly look out for him, and this classic device had the suction power of Ryan Ari's mom on a Friday night. I got you again, you chump! Shut the f up, Ryan Airy! Now, Huey also mentions his Marlboro Act Man, which is a reference to the video at the start of the episode, which was based on classic cigarette adverts. From here, we jump to the deep's waterbed. It's not, but it would have been cool if it was. And either way, he's found out he's about to be on Sean Hannity, and to celebrate this, Fox is about to get wet, wet, wet. Time for some tentacle As we watch Deep suggest a threesome to the song More Than Words by Extreme. It's an extreme scene, and Deep says that the octopus Ambrosia wants to taste Cassandra, and I guess that's how with a squid you get eight. Like taste and eight. Right, I'll stop with the shit puns. Now Deep also mentions that Dave Edgar says he has formidable intellect, and the author was behind the book a heartbreaking work of staggering genius. Back with Black Noir, the animals act out his time with payback at Ford American. This was the name of the company in the comics, which was then shortened to Vought for the show, but it's nice they gave a slight callback to its prior name in the flashback to the past. Soldier Boy beats the crap out of Gunpowder, and as we learned in episode 3, he was abusive towards him. Noir then storms in, angered that Soldier Boy had him drop from Beverly Hills Cop. I was born to play Axel Foley. Why would you say all those horrible things about me to Don Simpson? Jeez. Now Axel Foley is the name of the character that Eddie Murphy played, and Noir said in episode 3 that he wanted to be the next him. Sadly, uh, black members still a non starter below the Mason Dixon. Well, I could be bigger than that. I could be Eddie Murphy. As mentioned earlier, Soldier Boy badmouthed him to the legendary Don Simpson, who was a producer for not only Beverly Hills Cop, but also Top Gun, 
Bad Boys, The Rock, and of course Flashdance. Soldier Boy smashes his face and like you should smash that like button and this idea of him being upstaged of course plays into the ending. Whereas he didn't want Noir to replace him, come the end of the entry, he seems to genuinely want Homelander to succeed him. Later on he comes across a priest and a nun out on the road in one of the funniest scenes in the entire season. I love how he just starts shooting and says they're brainwashed by Mindstorm and you kind of go back and forth over whether Soldier Boy is just paranoid. Turns out he's justified though and we get a hilarious jump scare that ends in a black and white and red all over joke. It's a way I tell him. Now next we see Homelander at a Robert Singer election rally where he spins Starlight's house for runaway teens as being tied to the Shining Light Liberation Army as a location that traffics children to their organisation. Bill's on Ashley's statement from before and this clearly convinces Todd who's at the rally with Janine. Throughout we see Victoria Newman watching Homelander like a hawk which further calls back to when he arrived at the rally in season 2 and she wouldn't take her eyes off him. Now that we know she's the head popper, this adds a lot of extra context to it. Homelander also points out the media's cameras at the rally which I believe is meant to be a nod to when Donald Trump did the same thing at one of his. Homelander ends the speech by saying vote Bob Singer and this is a great supernatural easter egg. Now Robert Singer, are you, are you listening? Well Robert Singer, it's good easter egg, he, in the show he's played by Jim Beaver. Now Jim Beaver also starred in Supernatural and he played the character Bob Singer. Supernatural also starred Jensen Ackles who plays Soldier Boy and it was produced by Eric Kripke who runs the boys so as we've been saying it's all connected. Like now after stressing out over a hallucination of Soldier Boy, Homelander ends up going to milk a cow. This further plays into the fact that he never had a mother or father in his life. Homelander developed his fascination with milk in season 1 when Stillwell breastfed her son and he got jealous of the baby having a mother. In the background we can hear Crimson and Clover by Tommy James and the Shondells, but this moment of peace is interrupted by Victoria Newman. Similar to last week with Starlight, she wants to work with Homelander, but instead of getting rejected, he seemingly sides with her. She hands over a piece of yellow paper, which we later see has an address on it. I'm guessing that this is the location of Ryan, and I'd imagine for the season finale that Homelander catches up to him. Stop, it's theory time. Now we get some foreshadowing to Victoria's potential arc in the series with us later seeing a news report for Lamar Bishop who's the favourite to be the vice president. In the comics Victoria's counterpart Vic the Veep ended up taking the position after he was planted there by Vought. So my guess is that this news report is shown to us to introduce the vice president pick in order for him to be taken out by Victoria so that she can replace him. Vought were desperate to get Vic to become the president so that they could rule over the entire country with their inside man and if she does get that position I think she'll end up killing Dakota Bob, much like how Vic the Veep killed him in the comics. Anyway, that's theory time, theory time, theory time, might not be true but it's theory time so don't, don't lose your shit if we'll get it wrong because it's just a theory you idiot. Now we get to A-Train in the hospital and I was so glad to see him back. I know a lot of people thought that he died last week but I think keeping him alive was the smarter way to go about it. We discover that he's had a heart transplant and now carries that of Blue Hawks. He doesn't exactly seem thrilled by it and actually kind of bombards him with all the plans that they have for him. This includes talking trash about Starlight and as we theorised, Soldier Boy is going to take the blame for killing Blue Hawk. Ashley says they also have a biopic in the work for him starring Tom Hanks as his running coach that's going to be written by Julian Bellows. Hanks is very much whitewashing the person who actually trained him which is of course his brother. I do think A-Train won't just fall back in line like this scene paints out and I actually believe that after last week's apology that he might end up joining the boys in the fight against Soldier Boy and also Homelander. During the news report we also see that there's a headline asking whether Starlight drinks adrenochrome. This is basically a form of adrenaline that was tested during the 50s until the 70s and it ended up causing schizophrenia. However in recent times it's also been linked to Pizzagate as being a substance that was used in well you know what it is. Now this ties into Starlight's home for runaway teens and builds on the conspiracy theory put forth by Homelander. Frenchie finally figures out that gas hasn't been knocking out Soldier Boy and instead it's vaporized nerve agent. This is Novichok which is believed to have been used to poison Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. The footage in the video of course made it seem like he was being gassed but when Milk tried this at Herogasm it just didn't work. However, this will be a way to put him to sleep when it comes down to it. Also, this might be a reach, so bear with me here, but Frenchie wears a weird flowery orange top. Looks a bit feminine and when we look at the stuff that little Nina has worn throughout the series, 
It is similar to something that she'd have in her collection, so I actually think it might be one of her clothes that they grabbed last week after they managed to escape. After dancing to Dream a Little Dream of Me, Kimiko explains why she wants V back and that they're more than just lovers, they're family. Her starlight steals some V and after looking at the notes for V24, we get a split second flash of a document for it. If we slow down the footage, we can see that this causes tumours along with atrophy, which will kill a user, confirming why Butcher and Billy's ears have started bleeding. It's lethal after 3 to 5 doses and Butcher at the end very much gambles over whether to keep taking it. Now we cut back to Buster Beaver and we see in the scene that that country I can't pronounce and here we discover that it was actually Edgar who ordered the hit on Soldier Boy. Edgar is portrayed as a weasel and he continuously eats almond nuts in front of him which are of course Noir's weakness showing that he holds the power here. He clearly knows Soldier Boy is bad product and wants him out of the way so that they can try again with his son. We see what really happened and how Payback turned on Soldier Boy which led to him burning Noir's face and smashing his skull open so that his brain came out. This has left him unable to speak and given him a childlike persona. They strap on a vapor gas canister to his face and it is possible that this tactic will also be used next time to take him out as we now have two scenes that discuss this method. Milk then goes to get Janine and he punches Todd after he sees that he's trying to indoctrinate her into politics. He doesn't think there's any danger with Soldier Boy and as we've talked about in the other videos, the creative team discussed how there would be metaphors for the pandemic which are there if you want to see them. At least I think so anyway. Now after getting a confession that he killed Supersonic, we learn that Starlight actually lost 3 million followers since the last episode. Last week Newman said that she had 193 million but she's now dropped down to 190. Still though, it's enough to expose him and it's going to be interesting to see what the repercussions of this are. Finally Soldier Boy and Huey come across Mindstorm's cabin which is littered with wind chimes probably to distract him from the fact he has people's thoughts constantly entering his head. Huey teleports him out of there and we can see that this was part of his original plan as he left a bag of clothes behind so that they could get dressed. We see the final flashback in Billy's head and learn how Lenny ended his own life. This alters things from the comics as in those he was hit by a bus which happened long after he'd grown up. Billy still leaves for the army and he abandons him, uttering his dad's homophobic slurs as he exits, showing how he ended up becoming him. Really heartbreaking scene watching Billy beg his younger self not to go and though the accents sound like some Dick Van Dyke thing, the emotional beats work really well. The gunshot sounds as Butcher snaps out of it and he mistakes Huey for Lenny for a split second. The words about him getting everyone killed who gets close to him ring in his ear but Soldier Boy arrives and kills Mindstorm, smashing his head in similar to Black Noir. It's also a very similar death to how John Walker killed a Flag Smasher and Falcon in the Winter Soldier and Mindstorm reveals Homelander is his son. Huey also wears a Footloose t-shirt and Soldier Boy realises that he can't trust the pair. They return to the cabin and we also see a poster for the Countess's Whiskey Sunrise which is similar to Tequila Sunrise. Starlight rings Billy in order to get through to Huey and she tells him the truth about V24. As Lenny said he'd get everyone close to him killed and this is cemented here when he doesn't warn Huey about the lethal side effects. Kimiko ends up taking the refined version and her wounds disappear showing that it worked. We then end with the Darth Vader moment and this spins the whole show on its head. Next time things are about to get crazy and though I don't think this quite topped last week, it was still an incredible episode. This season especially has really knocked it out of the park and I can't wait to see what they do next time. There's also a post credit scene involving the Looney Tune type characters bowing and that's the end of the video. Shabow! And of course I'd love to hear your comments and what you think will happen as well as any easter eggs that we missed. We're running a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of everything everywhere all at once on the 15th of July and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the boys. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on twitter at heavy spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of Westworld which will be linked on screen right now. The new season has just dropped its first episode and we go over all the easter eggs, hidden details and give a nothing but theory times about what the hell's going on. Hopefully see you over there right after this but if not enjoy your weekend, take care, peace.